Okay, so I'm going to talk about statics now. Um, <clears throat> this is something that is almost always very confusing to people in their first semester, especially because it comes right after we just talked about classes, objects, and methods. So everything seems so simple, and then statics kind of comes around and throws a monkey wrench into things. So I'll, I'll try to do this slowly and clearly, but at the same time, it's a little weird because the more the more time you spend on statics, it's, it almost gets more confusing. So I'll try to keep it short and concise and clear, I guess. Um, I, I had this idea that um, uh, for this example that might be good. We'll see how it works out. So I'm going to create two classes this time. I'm going to create a class called student. I'm going to create a class called teacher. So and in my classes, I'm going to leave them empty for now. So here's my student class. So now I can create students and teachers in my back in my program. And let's do something simple like uh, students have public string name and public string grade just to make it look a little different than teacher. Our teacher doesn't have a grade. Teacher just has a name. So teachers have a name and students have a name and a grade. So that's all there is to those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my program and I'm going to write some really simple code. I'm going to say, um, let's see, teacher, the teacher equals new teacher. And then I'll give him a name. And since I'm the teacher, my name's Donnie. All right, and now I'm going to create some students. S student. Let's call him student1. Variable name doesn't matter. Equals a new student. And we'll give him a name and a grade. Student one dot name is John Doe. Don't want to play favorites. Student dot grade equals. Let's say he's going to be. I'll just copy and paste this. <coughs> now I have a student two two two. We'll make this Jane Doe, and we'll give her an A. So I have one teacher, two students, and put breakpoint there, sanity check, look at my objects in the debugger, open them up, there's me, there's John with his B, there's Jane with his A, or with her A. So we're good to go. We have uh, what's called an object graph. An object graph just means you got a bunch of objects. Maybe some of some of the variables are, well, all, actually all of these variables, as we talked about before, are, are pointing at objects. So it's it's basically every object oriented program is an object graph but so here is where we get to static so what is a static so this was the idea that I came up with we'll see how it plays out we'll see if it's understandable what if I want to do something like this int num teachers equals zero and int num students equals zero so every time I add a teacher I'm going to say num teachers, oops, num teachers plus plus, and every time I add a student, I'll say num students plus plus. So I can do that, and then at the end of the program, I can write it out. System.console. Dot write line. Num teachers, and we'll do it again with num students. Whoa, that was weird. All right, so there's my program. Um, it's exactly the same, except this time I'm keeping track of how many students there are, how many teachers there are. And there's one teacher and two students. Maybe I should make that a little more...
teachers, students. There, that'll look a little better. Teachers one, students two. Okay, so statics, what are they? So the first example of a static is when I look at this code right here, I say to myself, this is ugly. Well, for very many reasons, but one reason that I'm going to talk about first, and that is an, uh, there's something in programming called scoping, and that means all of the variables that you create and all the data that you create lives in a place that makes sense. And right now, I've kind of just like ad hoc on the fly declared num teachers and num students in the main program, and that's very sloppy. Um, it's better if we store that information somewhere else, somewhere that's very specific to students and teachers. Well, you might say to yourself, hey, look at this. We have a class student and we have a, te a class teacher. That sounds like some a pretty good meaningful intuitive place to store that information instead of out here in the middle of you know just these local variables in the main program because these variables are going to go away since they these variables right here are local to the main program which starts there they end there you know in this case it's not a big deal but maybe you know the local variables are going to die before we want them to that's another complication. So first of all, the scoping is an issue, and two, it's just not intuitive where they live. They're just kind of loitering in the main program, and they're kind of just not easy to find, or they don't seem like they should be there. It seems kind of random and unorganized. So having the teacher in the student class there, one might say, oh, well, I'm going to say public int num teachers or maybe just count so that'll count how many teachers there are right then I can um, access it there however if we think about what this really means is this is a member variable declaration this means in English every teacher has a count well that's not what we want we don't want every teacher to, to have the count because if there's 17 teachers then every single teacher object will have the number, you know, a number inside of it. We don't need 17 numbers, we just want one number. <laughs> so that's what static does for us. So if we put the word static here before we declare it, this means does not exist on the instance objects. Exists once on the class. So it basically turns it into a single variable that lives on the class, which is weird and confusing because before everything we put inside of this class definition meant every teacher has a this, every teacher has a that. That's the rule unless there's the word static. So this doesn't say every teacher has a count. This says there is one variable, it's an integer, and it's right here on this class. So, um, I guess you could call it kind of a global variable in a way, but the important thing is normally you look to the class to see what's inside all of the instances that you've created from that class. The statics will not be inside of those instances, the statics will be on the class. So just to exemplify that, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to get rid of this num teachers because now I have a teachers.count. So instead of saying, instead of using the variable that I was using before, I want to use that variable that I just created. So how would I get at a static variable? Well, the way you would get at this variable is you would name the object, like, you know, the teacher, and then you would say dot. And then once you said the dot, it would show everything there and the name would be there. But since this is static, it's not on any of the teacher objects. So where would it be? It's on the class. So you literally have to s say the name of the class. So if you start with the name of the class and hit dot, it will show you all the static things on the class. So now I can do that instead. 
And again, similarly down here, instead of using that local variable that we had, we can use teacher.count. Now you have to be careful here because there are certain places where we're using syntax that looks similar, right? We're using the name of the class to declare a variable. Now we're using the name of the class to access a static variable. Here we're using the name of a variable name to access a member variable on an object. You know, you have to you have to really memorize these uh, details of the syntax. This is a variable declaration type followed by variable name. This is a variable that we already declared. This, since it's an object, the dot will take you to that instance object and show you all the variables that are available on it. Anytime you see the name of a class with a dot after it, I'll repeat that, anytime you see the name of a class followed by a dot, that means you're looking for static stuff. The only way you can get at statics is the class name with a dot after it. Um, if you don't have any statics, then you should never be saying um, class name dot something. So that's what a static is in a nutshell. And I could do the same thing with student. I could say public static int count. And I should probably initialize it to zero. Maybe I'll do it in the main program. So I'll say teacher.count equals zero and student count equals zero and then down here instead of num students plus plus we can say student dot count plus plus and use student count count there so this is an example of how to use static variables and the nice thing is um, two things like I said one it just kind of makes sense um, in that place because this variable here is related to teachers so it makes sense that it's it kind of exists in the teacher class and also if we were somewhere where we didn't want that variable to die when it reached the end of its scope static variables never die they always they stay there forever so they're kind of global variables that never expire so it'll be there forever so that's the very basics of what a static is. The second part of statics is you can make a static method as well. Why would you ever want to make a static method? Well, it's a good question. So let me think. What would be something that we would want to do? What would, we, what would be something that we would want the teacher or the student class to do that we would not want every single um, student or teacher themselves doing. Well, any old example of that will work as long as it doesn't have anything to do with a particular instance. For example, if I said public static void, um, we'll just say hello world. So this is just a normal old void method. The only difference is I put static before it. So this is a static method on the teacher class and you know this isn't really a useful method but the point being is if there were maybe I should put it on the student class instead it make more, make more sense maybe all students can um, no that's fine hello world so this method is not going to do anything different depending on what student does it. So if there's 17 students, I could pick any one of them and this method would do the same exact thing. So why bother having all 17 objects having their own version of the method? That's where static comes into play. Static means there's only one method. It has nothing to do with a particular instance object. Nothing to do at all. So whereas before we were telling objects, specific objects that have their own values to um, call this, in this case we we have this this method has nothing to do with ins an instance object as such these two things up here name and grade we would have no access to those in here 
So if I tried to say name equals, you know, like this dot name equals that, that doesn't make sense because this is now the class. It's not an instance object. And these two things up here say every instance of the student class have a name and a grade. Well, in this case here, I, I'm not inside of an instance of a student. I'm on the class. There doesn't even have to be any student objects for me to be able to use this method. So I know statics are a little weird. Uh, I'll spend a lot of time explaining them in class because that's the kind of thing where a whiteboard really helps. I should actually try to incorporate some whiteboard stuff into my um, YouTube lectures. I'll try that later. But point being is, um, again, it lives on the class. It has nothing to do with the instance objects. And it's a little confusing. I wouldn't worry too much about statics right now because the assignment uh, doesn't have too much to do with them. The majority of the assignment is uh, about member variables and member methods, but I did at least want to talk about statics a little bit. <coughs> so that gives me an option here of whether I want to talk about one more thing. And I think I'm going to leave this alone and I'm going to go on to one more video which is kind of just a a nice example of classes, objects, methods, maybe a couple of statics if, if I want to, and um, hopefully that'll help tie some of this up. And when we talk in class again, I think that'll give me a good idea of a example five too. So I'm going to write an example four on my own here, but then after we talk and I figure out what you guys are the most confused by, then I can work on example five, or maybe we can work on it together. But um, either way, just keep keep a lookout for that static. And anytime you see a class followed by a dot, that means it's static. So hint, hint, you know, you've been using console.writeline all along. Console is a class, and it's followed by a dot. WriteLine is actually a static method on the console class. So, you know, I'll, I, I promised you guys full explanations of all the, the mysteries, especially this stuff uh, within the first few weeks, but you know we're almost there. Um, once you understand classes, objects, uh, methods, parameters, statics, all that jazz, then we can really uh, not pull any punches and I'll be able to explain everything. Alright, I'm going to comment this up, I'm going to upload the video, and I'm going to work on one more video with uh, a program to kind of tie these themes together.